Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Fluffy Pigeon art page. My name is Christine, and today I'm going to show you how to paint with just one color. And we call this monochrome painting, but I feel like it's like a fancier version of monochrome painting because I'm actually going to be painting with this beautiful handmade paint called Phantom Earth. It is a mixture of green and orange. It generally comes out pretty brown, but there are occasionally these lovely gorgeous hints of teal and um, when you're working with granulated paints where they have like all the different colors mixed in together that just pop from time to time, you can never be super, um, I guess it's never super predictable what color is going to come out. And you can work with that depending on how much water you add to your pigment. And you can just take it right out of the pan. You will see me doing both. I'm going to keep a pretty watery pigment here on my palette. Nothing fancy. This is a um, palette from um, Addison and Sedgwick, I believe I bought it, purchased it from. And the watercolor paint is by Art by Wei. She hand makes all of her watercolor paints. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start with um, a watery floral pigment using this. I'm actually just going to make some brush strokes with my dagger brush. You can get daggers from lots of different companies. I have one from um, King Art that I'm really enjoying. I just received this the other day. And I have another one from Christy, the water um, color painter on um, Instagram. Uh, her name's Christy Rice. She sells sets of lovely watercolor brushes as well. But today I'm using the King Art brush and I am using this beautiful um, Phantom Earth pigment. So you can see right now it's coming off pretty warm, like a warm orange color. You're gonna see as I work through this that some of this is going to end up being a little darker in like a brownish color. And then you're going to at times see a greenish color coming off of this. Right now I'm painting my flowers around and behind this centerpiece. That's generally how I start. I create a center flower and then kind of go from there and then kind of let the movement in my mind guide me. I very rarely make straight pieces like up and down or across. I usually do curved pieces like a um, crescent moon shape and I do that. I like movement a lot in my pieces which is why I like <coughs> excuse me the dagger brush so much because it creates so much like sharp and clean movement I really enjoy that and um, I do like movement I like seeing movement in the whole piece as well so in my mind's eye I'm seeing something that kind of comes across like this and this like crescent slash um, parentheses shape you're gonna see as I work, I will occasionally add more pigment to certain spots. It doesn't always have a reason. Sometimes it's just one or two extra darkening of the pieces. I'm still using my super watery colors. And you can see me adding, not necessarily whole brush um, shapes to fill in some of these pieces, just little ones, just light little brush strokes to add dimension to the piece. As I move along here, I'm gonna to start to put um, my brush strokes as darker behind some of these flowers. So my lightest pigment is the one that I already put down. And then you're gonna see as I work that most of the pieces behind the flowers are just gonna get darker and that's for shadow purposes. I've learned as I have painted over the years to find brush strokes that I am most fond of that create what I make um, become kind of my signature. The more I'm comfortable using them, the more I do them, the better I get at them. Um, finding your style is this like amoeba because sometimes your style changes as you work 
and they're just certain shapes like the dagger brush making these like skinny center skinny outside and then the middle being this like droop where that pops out becomes kind of something I really value in my work I really like the look of it I like playing with uh, the different opacities and transparencies of the flowers as well so one of the things I'm seeing is that I have a majority of the blooms over on this side so I'm thinking about what does that mean like where is the stem gonna go so I'm gonna give just pigment right out of the pan I'm gonna curl it like this right up this way and so this set of blooms over here I'm just gonna kind of curl this way and then as I work, I can see like, okay, so there's still this empty space over here. How much do I want to fill that? Do I want to fill it up here a little bit? Maybe. Notice I'm not completely filling in all of this. Like I'm leaving these breaks partially so that I can add more flowers potentially in those spaces. Maybe down over here. I'm going to add something a little darker picking up a little more pigment in my watery mix. And you can see that maybe is a little too dark. I'm gonna pick that up and use that for some of this here. And sometimes you wanna use a dark pigment to hide a branch that you put down and you're like, ooh, that was too much. And then you're like, oh, maybe I should add a few more dark biggie pieces throughout here. Brown is a great color to do monochrome work with. It works super well in a neutral space or area that you would like a piece or an art um, exhibition or just something to kind of spice up a location. I love neutrals in a house because you can play with color in those spaces or you can continue to play with neutrals in those spaces. Okay, so you're starting to see me pick up a heavier pigment and that is to show some of the um, greenery or the botanical piece where you would potentially see some leaves. And I'm doing this to the flowers that I imagine are getting a side view, like here. And then this guy, I'm still trying to figure out what the heck I did there. Maybe he's, I'm just gonna put this over the top and that is like a flower from behind. I'm gonna work with that a little bit later. Okay, so we know what color the leaves are going to be because I've started putting that in here. I don't think I'm going to add any more blooms to this. I think I'm just going to start adding leaves in this same dark pigment. I like to put leaves where the branches intersect. Well, I know that's not always the case in a flower or a botanical. It's just what I like and we all have our preferences, right? So you can see I'm doing um, more symmetrical leaf, 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 leaf. Sometimes I don't do it that symmetrical. I think right here I'm gonna pop one out where the intersection is. I just like doing that at the intersections. It's just a preference. It's not because it's the rule. It's just what I like. And you can see me pulling that in there a little bit. Now, one of the things that I have not dealt with yet that I still want to deal with is gonna be these centers. So I have to decide what I'm gonna do. Now, since I'm doing this monochrome painting, um, I already made a piece earlier that looks kind of like this. And it's monochrome, but I added some um, shimmer to it. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and I'm thinking I'm gonna keep the center vibe that I have on this where you can kind of see the little stamens poking out. I think I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna add the shimmer on top after I'm done. And I suppose that makes this not so monochrome <laughs> if I'm adding another color in there at the end. But it's really more or less for the shimmer, it's less about having a different color. And I thought that would have been a good shimmer color to add. Another one up here and here. Try not to do anything in like too obvious of a pattern sometimes. Like you don't want like odd numbers are great. Like this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has five. I might make this one five as well. Even numbers are fine. I mean, they do exist in nature, but sometimes the eye just likes the other stuff better. 
And then just have some peeking out in these areas. So over here. And I don't mean to do it for all of them, but oh, I forgot to add its little branch there. <clears throat> um, definitely this one. And again, it's your work. You can make it whatever you want. I think sometimes we get hampered down by the idea of it has to look like something that's real. No, it doesn't. I mean, I've lived in that place for a long time. Like, how do I make it look more real? Well, you know what? I am not a master. And when I feel challenged to make something look real, I will. But when I just want to paint and do something that's going to make me happy, it doesn't need to look real. I can make it look however I want. Whatever is going to make me happy in the moment, that's most important. And if someone else loves it, great, that's amazing. But I don't need to make my art to make someone happy. As long as I'm happy, that's most important. If the art you're making is not making you happy, then find another avenue. Pick another something to make you happy. And it doesn't have to be art. Maybe it's not art at all. Maybe you need a bright break from that. That is a you choice. Um, or it should be something that gives you joy, not something that stresses you out. I mean, unless it's your job. And then sometimes your job is gonna stress you out. Okay, moving on. I'm off my podium. This is Serpentine or Serpentine. This is a shimmer that I have from another handmade watercolor maker. Her name is Sprout Creative or her company's name is Sprout Creative. I'm gonna use this just for the petals. Uh, I'm still using my dagger brush, though I could change it up. This is going to darken it a little bit, but it's still in the same general mode. I still need to come back and work on that. That thing's still bothering me a little bit. I'm going to add just some shimmer here. I don't, I'm not going to put on every petal. I want it to be one of those like, ooh, look at that there. That's kind of cool. Right there. And here. And here. And here. And here. I'm just playing, putting it where I want. You should do whatever makes you feel good when you're playing. As long as it doesn't hurt anybody, and this certainly isn't hurting anybody. Oh, I got a little spot there. I'll have to fix it later, but I think I'm done. And I'm super happy with it. And now I have two corresponding pieces that I could put together on a wall. Isn't that cool? And then if I wanted to do three pieces, I could do something similar again. Or I could just keep making these and just it makes me happy. Do it, you know? All right, friends, that's it. Thanks for following along and um, make sure to like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff that YouTube tells you to do. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.